Hello, good morning. Today we are going to discuss about a MRCP sequence called examine this gentleman neurologically appropriate. You may be just given a patient and you would be asked to examine that particular patient in a neurologically appropriate manner. So how you are going to do that? That matters a lot. So the very first thing you are going to do in that particular patient is you have to ask the patient to close the fist and release. If the release is going to be slow like this, then you are dealing with a myotonic dystrophy. Next thing, you can ask him to look up with sustained manner, in a sustained manner, the eyelid droops, it's a myasthenia gravis. Number three, you can ask them to do a finger nose test. You can see for any incoordination. If it is there, you might be dealing with a cerebellar syndrome. Number four, you can keep a pillow and give an arithmetic stress. If the tremor starts, then it can be a Parkinson's disease. So today I'm going to tell you how you have to examine a case of Parkinson's disease. All right, here we have this gentleman. We have taken the full consent from this gentleman. Hello, sir. And as usual, I have already sanitized my hand. Hello, sir, good morning. I'm Dr. Moses. I'm one of the medical doctors here. I'm going to examine you and I'm going to show our candidates how to examine a patient with Parkinson's disease. He is fully happy, he has consented. With his consent, I'm going to demonstrate how to examine a gentleman with Parkinson's disease. Typically, if you can find, there will be masked-like faces, that is an expressionless face you can find here. The next thing I want you all to do is try to walk the patient immediately. I will tell you what are the findings you will find when a patient of Parkinson's walk. The very first thing. Can I ask you to walk, sir, gently? Please be very careful. Hold him very close. Hold him very close. Just ask him to walk slowly. See here, there is an increased tremor. There is a stooped posture called camptochormia. See here. And just two more steps. Just see here. And see the turn here. Now, I'll ask him to turn. Can you turn, sir? There is a decreased arm swing and if he turns, this turn is called an N block turn. He turns in blocks. I am just going to make him sit back in the place. That's it. Just help him to sit safely. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so <coughs> yes. So these are the things you will find in a gait. First is they call it as a camptochromia, that is a stooped posture, that is hyperflexion of the thoracolumbar spine, hyperflexion, that is called camptochromia. Then the arm swing is reduced and increased tremor, asymmetrical increase in tremor and the turn, what you saw is an N block turn, it turns in blocks like this. Suppose the same patient with Parkinsonian features, if he is going to walk with a rigidity like this, then you are dealing with a progressive supranuclear palsy where you won't find the camptochromia. Once you have done, you are going to divide the examination into three parts, that is the face, the hands, and as well as the legs. So what do you have to do in the face? What do you have to do with the hands? What do you have to do with the legs? With the face, you have seen masked like expressionless faces. You to look behind the ears and in the hair, to find any seboric dermatitis. You can find some seboric changes here in this gentleman. You can find some flakes here. You can find some flakes here. This side, if you can see, you can find some flakes. This seboric dermatitis is associated with Parkinson's disease, which you are seeing is associated with Parkinson's disease. The next thing you want to do in the face is blepharoclonus. May I gently ask you to close your eyes? There will be twitching of eyelids. Gently close your eyes. There will be mild twitching of eyelids. This is called a blepharoclonus. Then the next thing you have to do is, you have to do for two things. First, rule out upgaze palsy and see for nystagmus. The upgaze palsy is to rule out progressive supranuclear palsy and the nystagmus is to rule out any cerebellar disease associated with Parkinson's such as a multi-system atrophy. Now I am going to demonstrate that. Can you open your eyes for me, sir? Can you just gently touch your head? Is it okay? Okay. Can you look down for me, sir? Can you look down for me? Look down. Look down for me and look up for me. Look down for me. Look up for me. There is no gaze restriction. Then I am checking for nystagmus. Can you turn towards that side? See there? See this end? See to that end? There is no nystagmus either. 
then i am going to check his voice there will be hypophonia may I know your name sir abubakar where you are coming from mudi mm, mm, some hypophonia is there in the tone so that's all you are going to see in the face now come to the hands give a pillow to this gentleman mm. and see here there is a tremor there is an asymmetrical tremor if the tremor is not there then you going to give an arithmetic stress okay a count of 5 a count of 2 count of 10 whatever it is but there is a tremor there is an evidential tremor there and there is a tremor in the legs also if you can see there is an asymmetrical tremor in the legs there is a tremor in the hands tremor in the legs okay there is a tremor in the hands tremor in the legs in this case of a parkinson's then you are going to establish the rigidity so gently take the hand and gently rotate the hand there is rigidity if the rigidity is not established ask him to take the hand and move it up and down when he is going to move it up and down and just going to gently check your tone sir yes the rigidity will increase you can find the rigidity is increasing then you are going to check the bradykinesia can you ask him to sir may i ask you to take your hands like this and open and close see there is bradykinesia you can notice there all right now once you have done all these things you can find the tremor here rigidity you have found bradykinesia you have found then <clears throat> you can check any cortical signs that is any graphesthesia two point discrimination all right stereognosis here i am going to establish graphesthesia why i have to do a gra- cortical signs here to rule out cortico basal degeneration which is one of the parkinson plus syndrome now i am going to ask sir i am going to write a number can you close your eyes and tell me what number is that okay what number is this can you tell this number 8 8 he is telling correctly see his cortical sensation is absolutely intact then two things you have to do you have to rule out cerebellar signs to rule out multi system atrophy you have to do finger nose test and dysdiadecokinesia i'm not going to stress stress this gentleman with that examination but you have to do in the real exams then what i am going to do is i'm going to give him a piece of paper and check for micrographia all right i'll demonstrate how it is it's a piece of white paper and i'm just going to take a pen here i am just going to draw a circle here and i am going to ask him to draw a similar circle like this here micrographia is not the evident because he is on medication already but there is some micrographia seen next i am going to ask him to write his name i will write my name here i will ask him to write his name over here see here he can fairly write well because he is on medications otherwise a typical micrographia if i want to write my name it will go like this all right this will go like this a micrographic circle will go so small like this all right that's one thing next once you have done you have to look for differential bradykinesia that is you have to ask him to tap the hand up and down and rapidly dorsiflex and plantar flex the leg legs ka he is able to do it if you typically find a bradykinesia more on the lower limb than the upper limb then you are dealing with a vascular parkinsonism you can do a plantar if you want to rule out any vascular incidents but if you do this sequence it's more than enough for demonstrating a patient with parkinson's disease all right thank you okay at the end of the parkinson's examination couple of things you need to do you have to offer the examiner for three different things cognitive assessment lying and standing blood pressure and <clears throat> furthermore if the examiner ask you along with the cognitive assessment and as well as the lying and standing blood pressure after examining the gait and everything you can offer to do further test this lying and standing blood pressure is typically for any autonomic nervous system dysfunction either lying and standing blood pressure heart rate variability and also you can ask in the history for any kind of issues with this intimate relationship that is erectile dysfunction then again the lying cognitive dysfunction to rule out 
any other cognitive defect. 15% of the patients with Parkinson's disease will have dementia. Then the very important thing you will be wondering what happened to the postural instability that you have to offer. Don't ever pull the patient backwards that will put you into trouble in PACES examination. Don't ever do that. All right. Then ultimately you have to just thank the patient. Thank you sir for being a part of us. That's it. Done. That's it. Just press it.